Annie, her brothers and sisters, and all their children were born right in the thick of it, in the mouth of genocide, thrust from the land and their very ways of being, tossed into the fast-evolving, unfamiliar world of the settlers. Life was upended. That is a look at The Knowing, a four-part docu-series that follows acclaimed Anishinaabe journalist Tanya Talaga and her family's search for their long-lost matriarch, a search that is deeply entwined with Canada's residential school system. And Tanya joins us again here on TMS. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. The docu-series, which we all just saw there, has the same name as the book. It is also based on this book mm -hmm. that you wrote. Explain its title. Mm. The knowing. Every single First Nation, Métis, and Inuit family has a story, has a story of someone that did not come home from Indian residential school, from Indian hospitals, from tuberculosis sanatoriums, from, from all of these places. And so we all know someone or have heard of someone in our communities that just didn't come home. And when I was in Kamloops um, three years ago for the Lestway Way, the discovery of 215 potential graves, there was talk amongst everyone about how they all knew of people that didn't come home, and they called this the knowing. And when I first heard that phrase, I thought to myself, yes, that's exactly it for all of us. Mm -hmm. Now, the knowing honors Annie Carpenter, uh, your great-great-grandmother, uh, tell us a bit about her, if you could, and just the journey in, you know, discovering and finding more information out about her. So my mom, my mom is uh, 80 years old, and for a long, long time, she's been asking me to find Annie. Annie is her great-grandma, and no one knew what happened to her. In 1930, she was taken away from her home um, north of Lake Superior in northern Ontario, and she was put in a hospital. Um, she never came home again. And it was her daughter, Liz, that raised my mom. And Liz never talked about her mother. Liz had been to Indian Residential School, and she never talked about where she was from, who she was. She had her whole, it was like her memory about her life before was gone, erased. She didn't want to talk about anything. And so this mystery of who Liz and who Annie were, it sort of fell upon me because my relations, my uncle Hank, he had been looking for her in the age before the internet, trying to figure out what had happened to Annie, his grandma, and to his mom, Liz, to just make her essentially really just hate herself. And so my mom knew I'm a journalist, and she's been asking me for a very, very long time to find Annie. And I inherited my Uncle Hank's file folder full of all of these clues and information, and that became the basis of finding her and the book and the series. But the struggle was real for you, because as you delved deeper and deeper into this journey, you found roadblocks everywhere, because so many, so many officials just erased mm -hmm. Annie and so many others. Mm -hmm. It's a huge problem for many First Nations families. I mean, records are missing. Records are destroyed. Millions of records were destroyed in the 1930s by the Canadian government. You know, church officials have records. It's been a battle, as you know, to get the records from Rome and hopefully bring them here to Canada. We're still waiting to do that. Uh, very few people have been able to see those records in the Vatican. And we need access to these records in order to find our missing family members and our children. Was there any particular interview or story that really stood out to you while you were uh, researching and shooting for this project? Oh, so many, so many. I appreciate that. Um, the first episode, though, there is an interview with Gary Williams, and Gary was a survivor of Kamloops Indian Residential School, of Kokalitsa, and the Mission School, so three schools. And he had been to Kamloops. His son... His sons had been to the mission school, and his parents had been to Kamloops. So three generations of his entire family. And, you know, I sat down with him, and I heard his story, and he really sort of epitomized everything. He said, you know, the devils were the ones doing this to our people, yet they called us the devils. And he talked about the pain of losing his son as well to suicide, Gary Jr., 
uh, because he had been through the schools and he had ha an unbelievable hard life. This is a legacy of what Indian residential schools has left all of our families and our people, this trauma, and it's often passed down through generations. And Gary actually um, passed away recently, uh, Gary Sr. And uh, that was, every time I see him uh, on, in our episode, I think of him and of his words and how um, prophetic and sound they were. Well, everyone can see this uh, on the CBC on September 25th. That is when The Knowing is launched on, on TV. Meanwhile, the book, The Knowing, right here, is available in bookstores right now. Thank you for coming in, Tanya. Miigwech. Thank you. Good to see you.